Now, you might be thinking that that's kind of strange. Oh, we've only just begun with the strangeness. When it comes to matrix multiplication, you have to be really careful and attentive. Here's a surprise. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. The order matters, even among square matrices where you're not going to get in trouble with the dimensions not matching up. It is not necessarily true that A times B and B times A are the same matrix. Here's a simple example. Let's say A is a 2 by 2 matrix, 2, 1, 1, 0. And B also is a 2 by 2 matrix, 0, 1, 2, 3, something random. What happens when we multiply them together? You can check that A times B is the 2 by 2 matrix, 2, 5, 0, 1. What happens when we reverse the order and multiply B times A? Write it down, check it out, do the math, you get 1, 0, 7, 2. That is not the same. A, B, and B, A, not only are they not the same, they don't differ by a minus sign or by moving the terms around, it, nothing like that. They're just totally different. Now, sometimes A, B, and B, A are the same. For example, if you're multiplying diagonal matrices, that's great. But in general, it's not true that A, B, and B, A are the same matrix. Now, that's maybe not so surprising. There are lots of things in life that don't commute. We've seen an example with the cross product among vectors that u cross v and v cross u are not the same vector. They differ by a minus sign in that case. There are other examples in math. For example, in single variable calculus, when you were doing limits. Oh, remember that. Let's think for a second. Um, if I look at the function y to the x, and I take the limit as x goes to 0. As long as y is, say, a small positive number, this is going to 1, no matter what. On the other hand, if I look at y to the x, and I take the limit as y goes to 0, where x is some positive number, then that limit is equal to 0. So what that means is that if you take the double limit as x and y both go to 0, but you do them in different ways, orders, you will get different results. Limits are not commutative operations. Now, this extends to linguistics. It sometimes matters what order you put words in, unless you're speaking a language like Latin. And linguistics is not the only other thing in life where order matters. You have to be careful the order in which you do things. Non-commutativity makes life and mathematics a lot more interesting. You just have to be a bit more careful when it comes to that. Here's a great example of non-commutativity in action. In this case, in planar figures being acted on by some operations. So I'm going to take my favorite shape here, and I'm going to flip it about a vertical axis, or I'm going to rotate it a quarter turn to the left. That is counterclockwise by 90 degrees. So what happens when I take that shape and I flip it? Well, I get a different shape. And then when I rotate it to the left, a different shape still. Now, if I rotate, then flip, I get something different than if I first flip and then rotate. And that is a non-commutative pair of actions. And it's exactly what happens with matrix multiplication, as we'll see later. Here's an example involving matrix multiplication, order of operations, and the transpose. How does matrix multiplication behave under the transpose? Well, here's the result. If I take the transpose of a product, A times B, it's not A transpose, B transpose. Rather, it's the reverse order, B transpose times A transpose. Well, how do you prove something like that? Well, let's just start with AB transpose. Let's look at the ijth entry of that. Of course, by definition, that's really the j comma i entry of the product A times B. And we recall the formula for matrix multiplication, where the ijth entry is the sum over k of aik times bkj. Now, how do we apply this to that formula? Well, we simply swap out the i and the j and proceed with the sum over k of a, j, k, b, k, i. Well, now what do we do? Well, we already know, or at least hope we know, what the right-hand side should be. It's b transpose times a transpose. 
So let's look at the i comma jth entry of that. Again, by the definition of matrix multiplication, we have a formula for it. We can take that sum over k of b i k transpose, a k j transpose, apply what the transpose means, flip the indices, and now we get something that is not quite what we had before, but Oh, wait, it's pretty close. Why? Because if I look at what's underneath the summation sign, that's really scalar multiplication of entries, and that's commutative, and these two terms are equal. So if I have two matrices and their ijth entries are the same, then the matrices are the same. This is a result worth remembering, as we'll use it later, even if you can't or don't want to remember the details of the proof.